Hi, my name's Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the way in which some well-known Tories, as well as Tory commentators in the media, seem to be losing their minds at how legislation passed by the Conservatives, and which many of them supported, is working in practice. It comes as no surprise that these are largely the same people complaining about the consequences of Brexit that we all told them about and they denied until reality came into view. I mean, we did tell them. And so with that in mind, I suppose it's fitting that one of the most over-the-top comment pieces comes from David Frost, the guy who negotiated our Brexit withdrawal and trade agreements with the EU and has spent every waking moment since complaining about how terrible those deals were while somehow managing to blame everyone who said they were going to be terrible at the time rather than himself. A few days ago, he wrote an article about you know, civil liberties, I suppose, this time. The headline, we can no longer say that Britain is a free country. The byline, laws criminalising certain opinions are now having a chilling effect on freedom of expression in the UK. Now, the opinions they're subtly referring to are opinions such as people should be burned alive in hotels, that Greggs should be deprived of their sausage rolls with all haste, and that bricks should be lobbed at mosques and any police officers who take exception to this. Not that Frost suggests these sorts of expressions should be protected by law, quite the reverse. He accepts in his article that, yes, there are some things not protected by free speech. Absolutely, that includes inciting violence, he says. However, what he doesn't say is what should be protected but hasn't been. At no point does he actually bother to highlight an example of something for which people have been arrested but he thinks should be protected because largely the, the basis of this article and similar comment pieces I've seen is, oh, the, the law is being applied too harshly. There are people who've just said things. Yes, they, they shouldn't have said them. It's a very foolish thing to have said on Facebook or wherever the hell. But should they be really arrested for it? It's like, well, show me an example of what you mean then. Because what I'm looking at are people being arrested for suggesting that people should be murdered or that property should be destroyed. That's what I'm looking at. People who incited violence being arrested and convicted. You show me an example of someone who just said something foolish, as you say. Oh, you don't have any examples? How interesting. He says the law should be focused on genuine incitement, implying, like I say, that some of the messages for which people are now being convicted do not fall under that banner. But he cannot give a single example of where this has happened. Nor for all of his references to various pieces of legislation does he bother to highlight a single clause that he thinks is at fault for this perceived imbalance. After all, if you're suggesting that people are being arrested for things that they shouldn't be, you need to be able to pick out some aspect of a piece of legislation that's at fault, aren't you? Like many of us have in terms of, uh, say, the Public Order Act, which I'll be coming to, uh, in, you know, basically criminalising what is peaceful protest. And I'm reading this comment piece, as, as, as I've read various other similar pieces in the past week, in the wake of the far-right terror attacks and riots, and I'm left thinking, I am left thinking, but I'm, I'm left thinking, they're trying to turn this into a narrative of an authoritarian Labour government. They're saying, oh, this is Labour. Labour have come in, and all oh, the jackboot is down. And it's like, but Labour haven't passed any laws. They've only just come to power. Parliament's in recess. They've presented some bills to Parliament, none of which deal with anything like this. But no laws have been passed under this Labour government. All of the laws which have influenced the arrest, the charges, the convictions and the sentencing were put in place by the Conservatives. In fact, some of the most genuinely draconian public order legislation was passed in 2022 under the Conservatives the Public Order Act. It had no cross-party support at all. At the final reading of the bill in the House of Commons, only Conservative MPs voted in favour. There was like an independent, but he was a Conservative MP who'd had the whip removed. So it was just Conservative MPs voting in favour. Everyone else voted against. What's happening here is that these right-wing nutjobs saw the legislation at the time as a way of stoking culture wars. Those who were supporting it more broadly, saw it as a way of dealing with people who were a little bit noisy, like Steve Bray, or people protesting in favour of progressive causes in large numbers. 
Um, they obviously didn't realise that the same law would apply to people literally inciting violence and their brains can't take it. Or in some cases anyway. Like I don't dismiss the possibility that some people, even Frosty the No Man himself, which I'll come to, may just be jumping on a bandwagon. Because we don't always know, just because they write something, an article in the Daily Telegraph, it's like, do they really believe this or do they just like the paychecks from the Daily Telegraph coming in, right? Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the grifters and the actual idiots. But it just reminds me of Brexit all over again. They supported something thinking it would lead to a particular outcome. People said, no, actually, it's going to lead to a completely different outcome. And they said, no, no, that's Project Fear. It's going to do what we think it will. It's very similar. They're literally complaining about the practical outcomes of policies which they supported at the time. You know, consider the Public Order Act was passed when it actually, even at the time, it looked like the Tories were not going to win the next election. I, I don't know how many times I said it. I've, in several videos, I said to myself, they're passing legislation here. It's the sort of legislation you would pass as an authoritarian government. But you're passing it at a time when it's obvious the public have had enough and they're going to be handing the Tories their asses as soon as the election's called. The same legislation's going to be in place when your opponents are in power. What do you think that's going to do? Why pass legislation that they wanted to use to drive their culture wars but could just as easily hit their own toxic supporters? And given that our judiciary is independent, would be more likely to hit violent thugs, which they're trying to appeal to for some reason, because for all of the complaints about Labour's response to the riots and those inciting the violence, all the government have actually done is provide resources. You know, they've provided a, a public commentary, they've, they've, they've presented messages to the media, but they've, you know, the police make the arrests and they make those arrests based on their interpretation of conservative laws because Labour haven't passed any or repealed any laws yet. It's the Crown Prosecution Service who then decide if the evidence the police have provided to them is sufficient for charges and they decide what they're charged with and how quickly. The government just made sure they had the resources to do it quickly because the government did want them to do it quickly so they provided the resources to do that but they can't make the decisions for the CPS and arrests and charges aside it's down to the defendant to decide whether they're going to plead guilty or not. The government don't decide that. And if they do plead not guilty, it will be an independent court who will convict them or acquit them. And an independent judge or magistrate who will sentence them according to sentencing guidelines again set by the tourists. Yes, there's been this emphasis on making sure the sentences are particularly harsh in context, but that is also within the guidelines. Not a single sentence will be handed out that is not within the guidance set by the tourists. No new guidance has been set. The, the government's role in this has been making sure that all of the various agencies, from the police all the way to the prisons, had the resources, the space, the capacity to work quickly and to do its job. So what on earth are the far right complaining about? It's their system that's biting them on the arse. Maybe they thought at the time, well, the Tories will just calibrate the police guidelines to protect their own nutters. If they're never arrested, then the CPS have nothing to do with it. The courts have nothing to do with it. It doesn't matter that they're independent. We'll lean on the police, right? That's what they thought. And, and now look what's happening. Batshit Tories coming out the woodwork in blind panic. How dare this legislation that we passed be used on the people we're trying to appeal to instead of against the people we're trying to divide? The absolute state of it. If a single right-wing commentator has any complaints about this legislation but didn't raise them at the time it was passing through Parliament on the strength of Conservative votes alone, then they either didn't understand it at the time or they're just con merchants. Now, David Frost, he sits in the House of Lords. He made not one contribution to any debate on the Public Order Bill at all that I can find on Hansard. He did vote against it, I will say that. He did vote against it. But he didn't try to stop it because he didn't say anything to persuade other people to vote against it. He belly ached about the online safety bill. Oh, yeah, he, he certainly came out against that and the requirement for social media companies to take down harmful content. But not one word of complaint about legislation concerned with the arrest, charging and conviction of individuals. He just voted against it without saying a word. So if he had nothing to say about the legislation at the time, just like many of his Telegraph comrades in lunacy, then he has nothing to say now. And even if he did, 
As I say, he's just really jumping on a bandwagon of others who had nothing. You know, they wanted legislation which would imprison peaceful protesters. That's what they wanted. They specifically highlighted people holding banners on a pavement or outside a building. Those are the people, or, or Steve Bray with his megaphone or his sound system, those were the people they were using as examples of who we need to stop. But they're now looking at violent hate drawing the un uh, unwanted attention of the law, and they don't like that. And if they really did care about freedom of expression, which they say they will, they would not have supported directly or indirectly moves to restrict peaceful protest. What's really happening here is they wanted to be the only voices then it's not about freedom of expression. It's about their freedom to say what they want. They wanted it to be very, they wanted it to be laser controlled. We want you to suppress all these voices that aren't ours and allow ours to be the only voices. They already control almost all of the mainstream media outlets as well as much of the social media space anyway. They've got the money to make the biggest noise in a lawless space, so they're fine with that. They know that but they thought they could obliterate progressive voices altogether. They were buoyed on maybe by the rise of the far right around Europe and in America. Uh, they looked ahead to this sort of future where they took actual control. Not maybe in the messy way fascists have tried in the past. That leads to war and inevitable defeat. It doesn't last. But by controlling public debates, and when I say controlling, I mean making sure your side is representing both sides of that debate. And literally arresting anyone who tries to join in from outside hasn't quite worked out like that. Or at least not here and not now. The danger's still there, mind you. And if this is how they're behaving now, when Labour haven't actually had time to pass any laws or repeal any laws, so Labour haven't in any way shaped the legislative framework of what's happening right now. It's all down to the Tories. Imagine what they're going to be like in a few years when Labour have passed some laws. You know, their attempts to rewrite history, as I was discussing at the start of the stream last night, they've already begun very early, and they're only going to get worse. And if Labour are going to be accused of being draconian on the basis of Tory laws, I would say you may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. Get some media reform going. If they want to cry about draconian Labour, at least give them something to cry about. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for listening. Until next time, I'll see you later.